Hey guys, this is Landon with RH. This is a video, training video I'm going to do show you how to just Kogo a basic filed survey map using Carlson Survey. I've got a couple videos on my on our on our YouTube channel, learning channel at RH about map Kogo, but they're getting pretty old. So I'm gonna I'm gonna redo them. I actually I thought I had some better Kogo videos than I do, so I don't have I don't have very good videos so we're going to redo a couple of those this is a boundary survey it's a it's a pro bono survey i'm doing for a non-profit up in stockton i've got a, a set of videos uh, that walk you through that boundary survey but i'm going to take a break and just kogo those couple of maps I, I need probably two maps maybe three excuse me i might need a highway map we'll see so in this video i'm going to show you how to kogo a filed survey map and you're going to learn some Commands in Carlson. You're also going to learn a little bit about how to read file survey maps. I hope some of what we're going to teach is is going to be specific to my shop, but a lot of it will be applicable across other survey organizations. Um, working in Carlson 2023, I've got a drawing open here. So if you're in my shop, I, I went ahead and uh, if you work for me, I went ahead and copied our Kogo template and just dropped it in the Boundary Kogo folder here, and I renamed it uh, for the first map. So this is parcel map 11125. That's what we're going to Kogo. It's just blank drawing right now. I don't think in either of these videos we're going to have to deal with curves. Um, I, I need to do some. I need to do a separate set of videos just on curves. I think I might have one or two Kogo videos on curves already on the on the learning channel, but I don't think we're going to have to deal with curves. Let's take a look at this map. So this is parcel map 11125 in San Joaquin County. It was done in the 80s, as you can see. I was two years old when this map was drawn. I'm going to try and make these drawings and maps for this set of videos available online. If I can, I'm going to try and swing that, get you guys downloads, well, and I'll try and remember to link to those in the description on YouTube. So our parcel, subject parcel for the boundary survey I'm working on is over here. And we're going to code with this map because it's going to help us establish this center line of Wilmarth Road. Now, I don't need the whole map. All I really need is this little bit of, of lot furniture here. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to co-go all the line work here just so we can get closures, get, get good closures. I'm probably going to start here and come around up and back. So we'll do this outside shape first. Then we'll come in and close these smaller parcels and we'll... We'll do some offsets to get the right away here. Now, there's different ways. One of the things you're, you can see is there's different ways to do this. You can start with parcel A and then do parcel B and then do the bigger parcel. It doesn't really matter. Just pick us pick a place to start. So I'm going to start here and we'll we'll work counterclockwise around. So let me pull this over. <clears throat> So the, the first thing, well, let me show you. So the, whoa, the first thing we're going to do, sorry guys. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to Kogo this line right here. It's North 7303. Now he doesn't have a zero zero on here. We're going to assume it's three minutes even. 711 feet. Now probably the reason why that's not on there is he didn't actually survey this. This is like what we call an unsurveyed remainder. He really only surveyed this, so he's just he's showing the record value here. It's okay. So let's go ahead and get started. So when you're just doing straight lines in Carlson, you're going to be under your Kogo menu, and what you really want here is a line by angle distance. Now, don't pick locate by angle distance because that's different. You want line by angle distance. Now, sometimes when you run this command, it's prompting you to enter like Kogo points. There's a, there's a toggle in the options to switch that. So let's go ahead and run the command. The first thing it does is ask you to pick a point. Now, when you're just doing your Kogo, it really doesn't matter where you start. I'm just going to pick a point space. And what you want is you want it to say angle bearing code. If you don't have that, if you get something different, you gotta, you got to click through till you get to your options, and then you can open up your options. But this is set right, so it says angle bearing code. Now, what does it mean, angle bearing code? So I drew a little Kogo compass. We'll make this downloadable as well. You guys can print this out. So this shows you 
azimuth starting at north and bearings, the corresponding bearings in 45 degree incre increments all the way around the compass dial. And I also show you here your quadrants. So anything that is northeast is in quadrant one, anything that is in southeast is in quadrant two, southwest quadrant three, northwest quadrant four. So let's look at our bearing again. Our bearing is northeast. Now this is a little bit tricky since I'm starting here and I'm going this direction, I have to know that my no northeast is the opposite way. So what that means is I have to flip this quadrant when I draw my line, I have to go southwest. If I start here and I put in the bearing as northeast, it's gonna go this way. That's the opposite way I want. I gotta go southwest, the same bearing, 7303. Okay, so I'm gonna type in southwest 70, 7303 711. Now we gotta convert that for Carlson, we gotta convert that to a quadrant a southwest bearing is in quadrant three. You're going to see how this works. So I pick my point. It's saying, what is your, your angle bearing code? That's our quadrant. We are in quadrant three. Then it says, give me your angle. The angle is 73 degrees, three minutes, zero, zero seconds. And the way you do that is you in Carlson is you type 73 Seven. Oh, I don't know why my, oh, there it is. It's coming up here at my prompt, sorry. Seven, three, you put a period for the degree. Zero, three for the minutes, zero, zero for the seconds with no separator. And then it asks you for the distance, we're 711. And then we're gonna hit enter. There's our line. Now you'll notice You'll notice, sorry, I grabbed the wrong window. You'll notice that, that that doesn't look like what we drew on the map. Oh man, I got, I'm grabbing all the wrong windows. Sorry. It doesn't look like what, what's on the PDF. And the reason why is north is rotated. And sometimes that trips up my two text. You gotta look at that, north is rotated here, right? So it's it when you draw it in CAD, unless you rotate your north, which I don't want you to do, it, it's not going to be straight across. This looks like an east-west line, but it's not. It's actually at 7303 southwest, which is what you see here. That's why this looks angled. So you you got to you got to watch for when they twist the north arrow on a map, and they do that sometimes to get the map to fit on the sheet. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. We're going to do one more of these. So uh, now after you run the command, it it advances your cursor your current position to the end of the line and it just prompts you for the for the next bearing. Okay, so I'm gonna escape out of there and restart. So we're gonna tell it start here. My next bearing is southeast, so quadrant two, 170500, zero, zero. so 17 degrees, five minutes, zero seconds. And we're going 341.50 feet. So you can see that here. Here's my bearing. Now he labels it as north 17 west. He's going this way. He's going clockwise. I'm going counterclockwise. I got to flip that to southeast. There's our distance. That gets us down to this point. Now we're going to come over. Now this time he doesn't go all the way across because he's stopping at his new boundary here. So we're going to go back. North 7303 East 35650. Now, because I'm coming this way on this particular line, I don't have to flip the bearing because it's going to work. I'm going, I'm going northeast. So our quadrant's going to be number one. Let me show you that. Quadrant one. We're northeast, so we're quadrant one. Our bearing, our angle for our for our bearing is 73.5. Sorry guys, 73.0300, and we are going 356.50. All right, so we in there now. I'm going to go ahead and code with the rest of this. I'm going to try and speed up that video. 
you guys will be able to see what I enter on the screen, but I'm going to try and speed up the video. What I'm going to try and do is see if I can split my screen here for you guys. I'm trying to get that screen to split. It doesn't want to do that for me for some reason. And uh, we'll speed this up, and I'll let you guys watch me just cover the rest of this. And then when we're done, I'll undo the speed up, and we'll take a look at the closure errors, because I'm sure we'll have some. We'll take a look at the closure errors and, and how we create these right-of-way lines. Okay guys, so I got most of this line working. Now I dorked something up because you can see I've got a gap here, right? So in both these places I've got a gap. So I don't know what I did there. Let's look at this. Okay, so here's what happened. This line I drew is the correct length. It's it's 353.71, but you got to read these maps carefully. That's why these we call these crow's feet. That's why these crow's feet are important. That distance actually goes all the way out to this point here, which means these are off 10 feet. So what I need to do is I'm going to just move these lines now. I got to move them 10 feet. Sorry. So I'm going to draw a circle. I just didn't read the, read the map carefully. So that's a 10 foot circle. Now I can move these. <clears throat> and now you can see the closure error is basically gone. So those there's basically no closure errors there now. So that means this guy did a good job on his map. There's there's no big closure errors. Okay, now we can we can close this off. So we'll, we'll go ahead. We just got to draw on this little piece here to close off this last little bit. Now I could just draw the line in between, but I want I want to see if there's a closure error there. So that's why I'm gonna I'm gonna do it this way. So we're gonna draw that. That is gonna be a um, southeasterly sixteen point five seven zero zero. And we're going to go 25 feet. Okay, no, no, essentially no closure error. So I've got a good map here with no closure error. Now what we want to do is we want to put in the right of way. Okay, so to put in the right of way, you got to look at this map. I'm 20 feet from if I draw a line from this point to this point. So let's change our layer. I'm going to go ahead and maximize my Carlson here. <clears throat> so we don't we don't have a right of way layer. Um, so I'm going to just do this on layer 0 for now, and then we'll, we'll correct some layers. So I'm going to draw from here to here. So that's our right-of-way layer. Now you'll notice on the map, he does tell me I can go down 977 feet, 977.50 feet from here. you got to look at the crow's feet to get down to Waterloo Road. So we're going to do that. There's a couple ways you can do that. I'm just going to draw a circle. You can also use the lengthen command. We want to go 977.5. Oh. Okay, now I can extend this down, this right away line. Okay, so now it's the right length. That's, so this is Waterloo Road here. And what we're going to do is we're going to just do a couple 20 foot offsets here. So we'll run the offset command, put in 20 feet. Now we want to layer that <clears throat> properly. So I'm actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line here and I'm going to move it down here. And then we're going to go in and create a couple new layers. So let's open up our layer manager. No, nope, that's not it. Sorry. All right, so we're going to make a couple new layers here. So this is just the layer standard we use in my shop. So we're going to say survey, boundary, lines, and we're going to say right of way. 
sidelines. And then we're going to do, I, I am not going to use the right colors, so I should be checking the, I should be checking uh, our layer standards, and I am not doing that because I am a bad boy, uh, but for the purposes of this video, it will work. So then we're going to say survey boundary lines uh, right away, center line. Now your, your company may have a different different way of, lay, of naming these uh, layers. We'll make that a center line line type. So we got to load that. So we want center line. And then we're going to put these two lines here. These are going to go on the right away sidelines layer. And this layer here will go on the center line layer. Now, if we had had closure errors, <clears throat> I would have marked those up with some red circles, but we didn't. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save this now. So this is this is a nice clean Kogo. Now, depending on what you're doing, depending on your your place you work and the purpose of the Kogo, um, you you know your supervisor or your boss may ask you to add bearing and distance labels to this. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I don't. I don't think it's necessary. I, I don't have any closures here, and I don't want to clutter up my search drawing with that. You know, they might all ask also ask you to go in and do things like label these parcels, parcel A and parcel B, label Wilmarth Road. We don't typically do that here on our Kogos, and and I don't think I need to do it. So I'm essentially done here. I'm going to save this video. Now let me show you. We're going to do another Kogo video. So let me show you that map that we're going to do. So this was a, a pretty easy map. We are going to do this other map. It's going to be a little more complicated. So it's this record survey by Wong Engineers. Uh, so it's a survey of our next door parcel. We're, we're down here. So it's a survey of this parcel. So we, we, are, we are going to Kogo this area here. And maybe some of these tie lines down here on the highway. So this will be a little more convoluted. Uh, but we'll get that done. It'll give us some more practice. So I'll do that. I'll do that in another video.